Okay, in the spirit of don't worry, be crappy, I'm going to go through the brief history of the ABEC 11 flywheel series. Um, what I'm showing you here right now are the original flywheels. We can also call this the difference of nine series, meaning that each wheel that we were making was nine millimeters in diameter different than um, it's uh, the next one in the series. And so more specifically, we had a 74 millimeter flywheel. Add nine, that becomes an 83 millimeter flywheel. Add nine to that, you get a 92 millimeter flywheel. And that's shown here on the smaller of the two cores, which is a 50 millimeter in diameter core, and a wheel that we never made, which is the 92 millimeter wheel on the 70 millimeter core. This wheel stands out because it, more than anything else we ever did, proved that if you do not have a certain amount of urethane on um, a rim, it literally feels like it's riding on the rim and it's horrible. Um, that was a really bad wheel. And you can kind of just see, you know, looking at it, how much of that wheel um, is core, it is like super hard. Let me go ahead and take off, kind of make some softer edges here. Um, but we did do a 101, and arguably there wasn't enough urethane on that either. So this was the first flywheel series. We did this with Tom Peterson when it was still called Robot Custom Tool and Molding. That's the name before it was and industry. And we were guessing at the size of the cores and the size of the wheels and the ratio. But he was coming from a quad roller skate perspective where with eight wheels, you have more urethane and the conditions that they skated on, especially indoor tracks, were really smooth. And so we didn't really know at first um, what to do. Another um, note here is that all these wheels are 52 millimeters wide. Um, many of our flywheels today remain at 52 millimeters wide, but these cores were 52 millimeters wide. And the significance of that is that this core goes all the way to the outside edge of the wheel on both the inside and the outside. And without a flexible lip, you're going to get the, the wheel's going to slide a lot more smoothly and predictably. This wheel doesn't deform or flex in turns. It really kind of drifts in turns. Also, if you look at the, the profile of the wheel, these chamfered or angular sidewalls plus the filleted or radius corners also kind of sled the wheels to make these really, really predictable at um, sliding. So once they lose traction, these don't chatter. Also, these were all classic formula wheels, which slides way more predictably and smoothly than does um, reflex. We never did any of these wheels in a reflex at all. But again, nine millimeters apart, 74, 83, 92, and the 101. The 101 was the only wheel that we actually produced on the 70 millimeter core. These were 50 millimeter cores. This by comparison is where we're going to have evolved to, and that's a 40 millimeter, I'm sorry, 45 millimeter diameter core, but it's only 40 wide, different than the 52 wide, which means that there'll be six millimeters on each side of a flexible wheel when we design the next series of flywheels. So that's the first series of flywheels. Now I'm just going to put these all in line because what we did is we put every single one of these new wheels on a 45 millimeter core. That is five millimeters less in diameter than the 50 millimeter core, which was a smaller of the last two cores. And again, you can see that this is narrower. So we have this wheel with this overhanging urethane that has an opportunity to flex a little bit. We went steeper with this chamfer sidewall so we could get a bigger contact patch and we put a smaller radius. All of those things add up to having more traction than the wheels before. But the more significant change for the better in this series of wheels, once again, I'm gonna just take off those hard edges visually, is that with the smaller core and larger wheels, this wheel is larger than the 74 at 76. We maintained the 83 millimeter size, which turns out to just be a great overall wheel size. Um, we went from, uh, what was a 92 to a 90, but with the smaller core, 
we got more urethane. And this is a 97 as opposed to a 101, but we still have more urethane on that because of the, um, you know, there was a 70 millimeter core in that last one. And then um, eventually we had what we call the electric flywheel. It was not 72, I'm sorry, it was not 52 millimeters wide, but a full 76 millimeters wide. And at 107 millimeters, that was the mo most urethane we had ever, you know, stacked on top of, you know, that core. And it was significant. Now what you can see here with the electric flywheel um, is that it is center set, meaning the bearing seats are in the center, equidistant from each of the inside and the outside edge of the wheel. But it's not symmetrical. This is the, you know, the printed side of the wheel. It's kind of rounded and radius there. And on this one, we have this thing that goes out and then it just is flat backed and chamfered. So again, um, center set, but not symmetrical. All of these wheels over here though, are both center set um, and symmetrical. Took advantage of the new core that kind of revolutionized the flywheel series because even though arguably this wheel um, isn't as good as the other ones because once again, we don't have a lot of urethane on there. I'd rather have a 76 millimeter HD kind of wheel or small core wheel. But as soon as you get to 83, 90, 97, and 107, that's a lot of good urethane. And going to these new cores made every single flywheel in the series better than what we had before. This is also what we would call the difference of seven series because 76 plus seven is 83, 83 plus seven is 90, 90 plus seven is 97. Then we go to a bonus plus 10, 97 to 107 millimeters. But these in here have a, um, a, a different diameter size of seven millimeters. So where we're going from that is something you're familiar with. And this is the Master Carve series where I'm including two wheels that don't have the flywheel core. They have the HD core on them, but as an overall complete series, that bears the master carved name. We have essentially a um, that 83 millimeter HD and the 75 millimeter HD, which guess what? Those are eight millimeters apart. When you add eight millimeters to the 83, you get 91 millimeters. Add eight millimeters to that, you get 99 um, millimeters. And then the bonus biggie weird one, which isn't eight millimeters above that, but actually a full 111 millimeters um, is the big kahuna and the, and the king of the road. Now what's significant about these is that none of them are center set. They're actually all um, offset and will line up to put pulleys in the same place that the flywheels and super flies and, um, and uh, other wheels have. And I'll show you that differently in this next one. This was a made for Mary Lou uh, screen because it really talks about um, electric skateboard flywheels. So here is the center set 97 millimeter flywheel, which for a while had been our biggest flywheel having retired the 101 on that obscenely large core. It's got the 45 millimeter flywheel core as do all these wheels here. And again, this is center set symmetrical and 52 millimeters wide. So, you know, for Xscape, which was for a while, one of the bigger kind of exciting electric skateboard companies back in the day, that was a Brad Teschner connection. They had a 105 millimeter uh, wheel, special bearings that we could put into our flywheels. And the goal was to make something bigger than the 105 that they had and out of our urethane and our molds and so it would be a definite upgrade to the China cheap wheels that they were putting on their boards. So the, one of the actual inspirations for the electric flywheel, as we called it, or Electrofly, was to make a, a bigger than X-gate sized um, wheel to put on those boards. Now, ironically, as time moved on, X-gate went away and Dave's kind of builds and evolve and other people were starting to use and want um, you know, wheels for modern age electric skateboards. And this was kind of too wide to the inside. 
the pulley position, as you can see, um, let me do a little normal two here. The pulley position is inset too much compared to how we align um, all of the other wheels right now. So in order to just make a quick fix to that problem, we ended up coming up with what we call the Superfly. And the Superfly, as you can see, is really just a trimmed to the inside version of the 107. More specifically, what it does is we trim that inside edge so it is aligned with the regular flywheels. So people who use regular flywheels can put a pulley on, whether it's a 97, 90, or even 83, even 76, but nobody uses them. Um, and it's going to line up. So similarly, we're very careful with the master carve wheels to do that same thing, which is to align the inside edge, which is where the pulley is going to snug up against, and do that. So the electric flywheel is like the odd man out. It doesn't really work, per se, for electric skateboards. Technically, we can put pulleys on that. We have bigger, wider trucks, and we can use that. It's just a matter of pouring more urethane into the exact same mold that we pour the 107s in. So those are 107s there and there. And um, you know, I put the motor pulley um, on a motor mount that goes on the hanger to show you that a belt gets stretched across uh, those. And that's the consideration for all of the flywheels, super flies, and master flies is that we get that pulley alignment. And even the HD version, you know, we're careful to get pulley alignment there. So um, I think that's most everything. We went from a difference of nine to a difference of seven. Now we found that sweet spot in the Master Carve series as, as a difference of, of eight in our wheel sizes, 75, 83, 91, 99, and then the Big Kahuna at 111. They all are now based off this um, uh, pulley positioning and um, are all offsets. So um, that gives you a little bit of history of uh, 107s and uh, electric flywheels, which was the original 107 um, cut version, of course, being called the, you know, the, the Superfly. But um, the Master Carve is all about getting these, uh, you know, these pulleys lined up in this whole series of wheels that uh, have the same basic kind of uh, shape and everything that we um, we used in like those cross sections and images that I had just uh, sent you and Jeff earlier. So I hope you found this informative. I'm gonna upload it and you'll have access to it and you can refer back to it when you need to, bye.